Hot Ferrari. She's my hot Ferrari. Uh. Hello and welcome back to the Review Den. And, my friends, I have been remiss. We're burning through summer and I haven't even reviewed an Outrun game yet. Summertime, blue skies, and sweet fast rides. Yes, few games embody the free-spirited, wind-in-your-hair summertime vibe as well as Sega's 1986 arcade masterpiece, Outrun. Unlike previous arcade racers, OutRun featured no stressful opponents to beat or tight restrictive racetracks to memorize, only an open highway, beautiful scenery, and a timer to press you on as far as you could go. So unique was this take on automotive arcade games that lead developer Yu Suzuki insisted this not be referred to as a racing game, this was a driving game. This was freedom and fun. The runaway success of OutRun led to a plethora of ports and spin-offs, and in time I hope to cover them, but for now I'm actually going to start with OutRun 2. Yes, 13 years and roughly 6 spin-offs later, Sega OutRun received its first true sequel, which itself proved to be so successful and fun that it received several variations and updates which inevitably found their way to home consoles. These console ports, most well received, one a bit notorious, are what I will be covering today. OutRun 2 first hit Japanese arcades in December of 2003 and was an immediate hit. The game was beautiful, the driving fun, the action intense. Like Sega's more recent designs for arcade hardware such as the GameCube-based Triforce board and the Dreamcast-based Naomi board, OutRun 2 ran on the Chihiro arcade platform, which was essentially a lightly buffed Xbox platform. In fact, this was essentially an Xbox, but with twice the RAM and reading off of Sega's preferred GD-ROM discs. This gave the game a bright, beautiful 60 frames per second presentation, and the art design was pure Sega, blue skies and all. Like the original, OutRun 2 featured a branching 15-stage driving route, all based on beautiful European or East Continental locations, with many analogous to the original game. Unlike the original game, however, Sega brought the official Ferrari license to the table this time and featured eight beautiful Ferrari models from past and present, divided into several performance groups. Handling, all-rounders, acceleration, and professional, or top speed. And players would put these cars to the test with an all-new high-speed drifting mechanic. Much more forgiving than Daytona USA, but not as crazy as Ridge Racer, OutRun 2's new handling let you smoke the tires and slam down four-wheel power slides in 170 mile an hour style. You might need a few runs to get the hang of it, but it's an awesome spectacle regardless. And Sega was smart enough to add an objective or style-based race mode to further make use of the locations. Here your passengers will give you stunt-based instructions such as hitting a line of cones, collecting items, or racing cleanly. The better you do, the more hearts you collect, and the requests change based on your performance. It's a fun new way to play the game, and a clever way to add longevity to what might have otherwise been considered a short game in 2003. So, how did the console port size up? Well, you're looking at it. October 2004, less than a year after its arcade release, saw the release of OutRun 2 on Xbox, in the form of an expanded port. Thanks to the fact the game was running on near-stock OG Xbox hardware, porting the game was a very simple affair. An amazing feat, actually. The original OutRun was lucky to receive ports that even loosely resembled the arcade game when it released, but here we have a near-identical version of the game for home users. The arcade content was all still there, but now there was a 101 mission challenge tree with plenty of new unlockable content. These challenges included standard racing as well as an expanded selection of objective-based challenges building upon the original heart attack mode. Finishing a section with at least an A rating will unlock the next set of challenges as well as reward cards. Most of these are info cards on Ferrari products or cars, but the last in the row will unlock new content, such as new music, stages, and cars. Added to the original arcade's eight cars, we now have the 250 GTO, better known as always the most expensive car in racing games, 
the 328 for those who like to go Magnum PI, the 512 Berlinetta Boxer, the predecessor to the Testarossa, and the F355, which not only was featured as the title car of Sega's F355 Challenge, but more importantly gives you an official pass to use the You Couldn't Afford It Pal Ferrari meme. Rip Paul Walker. Music unlocks include tunes from previous OutRun titles as well as various remixes, and bonus routes include the tracks from both Daytona USA 2 and Sega Super GT, or Scud Race as Europe got it. These actually make the home port of OutRun 2 very unique for Sega fans as these two games never received any home conversions of any kind. Outside of emulation, this game is the only way to experience those tracks, making these rather impressive unlocks. And finally, rounding out this already great package is the original arcade perfect version of 1986 OutRun, unlocked by reaching all goals in the standard OutRun mode. Overall, this is a fantastic port. It improves on the original experience in almost every way. There's very little to complain about aside from maybe some slight slowdown in widescreen mode, which to be fair, wasn't even available in the original game. However, this was not the end for OutRun 2, though no. In December 2004, OutRun 2 saw an update to the Japanese arcade machine, adding a whole new 15 stages based on North, Central, and South American locations, while still keeping the original 15 European routes. Minor tweaks and additions to the gameplay were made, and the updated game was rebadged OutRun 2 SP, or Special Tours. Now, adding a whole new set of stages gave new life to the arcade machine, fine and dandy, but it was the home port that took OutRun 2 to its awesome final form. OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast brought a whole new level of racing and content to the home consoles, and this time, Sony joined the party. Coast to Coast was the second home port of OutRun 2 and featured both European and American tracks, three new Ferraris for a total of 15, all of which now featured a second high-performance variant and a whole new career mode with unlocks to match. Handling was improved for all cars and the game was made a bit more balanced, as opposed to the original OutRun 2, which was a bit unforgiving. Content-wise, this is the ultimate version of OutRun 2. The career mode had four sets of racing events and three separate upgraded stunt or heart attack request sets, all of which incorporated both track sets and multiple difficulty routes. In fact, let me just take a moment here to let the gameplay speak for itself and show off some of the fun objectives and stunts. Sega was really clever at keeping the gameplay fresh when you're not just straight up racing. Let's start! An invasion? I have an appointment! This version is loaded with content, and the tweaked gameplay, scoring, and multi-platform release means that fun is now available for everyone. Even the performance is better than ever, with the Xbox version having virtually no slowdown, and the PS2 and PSP versions looking great for their respective platforms. The only downsides here are a slight reduction in lighting effects, possibly due to the now multi-platform framework, and the loss of the retro stages and original 1986 game. In addition, the Sony releases instituted a slightly underhanded content lock, unless you had both versions and connected them via USB. It was kind of a scummy way to force players to buy both the games if you wanted all the content, but even if you get only one, you were still getting a huge enjoyable game. The Japanese PS2 version doesn't lock the content if you want to go that route. However, this was not the end of OutRun 2. Oh no. Now the final, final boss form of OutRun 2 home ports is a bit notorious, both for its content and its availability. Yes, there was a final arcade update, but this was mostly a cabinet update rather than a content-based one. Larger two-player cabinets were released, and they ran on new widescreen-capable arcade boards. But no, we're looking at OutRun Online Arcade. Released in 2009 for both the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, but as digital downloads only, OutRun Online Arcade was an oddly stripped-down version of OutRun 2 SP. 
It contained the original SP cars, but bizarrely lost the European stages, leaving only half the location content. Not only this, but career mode, bonus music, and unlocks are all missing. You have the racing and objective modes, of course, but for a game which released with much more content previously, this is an odd omission. Now, this might have been because download sizes for digital games were still very limited, but this was right at the cusp where download sizes were opening up for special cases, and you would think Sega would have made use of that. The biggest disappointment, though, was the elephant in the room for anyone who knows about this game. The availability. The PS3 version was delisted from the online store in 2010, barely a year after it was released. To me, this has always been a poster child for the frustrations of digital distribution. The game may be limited, but it still looks and plays fantastic. I love the earlier ports, and yet I would gladly pay to have the convenience, not to mention the graphics, of more modern systems. First world problems, perhaps, but I always thought of this game as one of the first big warning signs of digital distribution. Thankfully, though, anyone interested in retro gaming still has awesome options. The original has some cool, unique unlocks, while Coast to Coast has the most content. And if you can get it tweaked and running right, the PC version should rival the looks of OutRun Online Arcade, the best looker, but rarest of the bunch. Whatever version, though, OutRun 2 is an awesome play and fully worthy of a try. Sega created a video game icon with the original, and creating a sequel must have been a daunting task, but I think they managed to nail it. It's fun, it's fast, it's beautiful. A sunny day spent driving a Ferrari would be a tough experience to match, but leave it to Sega to live up to the challenge. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you'd like to help my channel grow, maybe watch some of my other videos. And hey, let me just give a big shout out to Lucian, the world gamer. He was one of the first fellow YouTubers to encourage me to keep going, and I really appreciate that. He's got some great content, including a Pocket Station review of a Crash Bandicoot game that has a branching racing path just like OutRun, so it fits in perfect here. But from me here at the Review Den, I'll be back soon with another review, and no matter what, be sure to keep going, even when things get tough, because you are worth it.